Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday evening, July 3rd. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for your location. We're still watching Elsa now passing just to the south of Haiti today, bringing strong winds and heavy rain to most of Hispaniola. We talked in yesterday's video about how Elsa last night was at a crossroads in its development where it was either going to be a strengthening hurricane south of Haiti today or a decaying tropical storm. The latter is what has kind of occurred here. We've had the lower level center peeking out from underneath the convection on the west side of the system for the last, well, 12 to 18 hours, and it has not shown any signs of becoming vertically stacked again. We'll look at the close in visible loop and we'll see that center of circulation right in here. You'll see it spinning at the beginning of the loop, peeking out from under the clouds, and it's still racing west-northwestward, just now beginning the process of slowing down in forward motion. And at some point, it will slow down enough that it stops getting sheared the way it is now, but it could be too late by that point for the system to remain robust. And it's certainly not a hurricane right now. Winds have come down. They're still stiff at about 65 to 70 miles per hour at a maximum. Uh, but we are seeing a disjointed vortex, and this convection is rather ragged and patchy. The mid-level center has been back here most of the day in the upper levels, and so there's a strong difference between the location of the surface center and the rest of the vortex aloft. This is a sign of disorganization, and the system's center is now also kind of racing out into this area of dry air near Jamaica, which is making it difficult to develop consistent thunderstorm activity around the center. So all of these things are kind of pointing to a struggling storm, uh, but one that still has quite a bit of wind and impacts with it. This is the recon aircraft data from the last few hours, showing that the storm center being somewhere around here still has a lot of wind, especially on the north and east side. You're not going to find much weather on the southwest side, but very stiff wind, still again, maximum of about 65 or 70 miles per hour in aircraft data down at the surface and it's likely to stay a moderate to strong tropical storm as it moves west-northwestward. And really going forward, the details of its interaction with all of these land masses in its way is what's going to determine exactly how Elsa looks when it eventually moves across Cuba and then into the Florida Straits or eastern Gulf of Mexico, where we could see a landfall in Florida on the current forecast track. And at the moment, it's narrowly avoiding the peninsula of Haiti, which has tall mountains. It's likely to pass north of Jamaica, uh, but the real question is how much does it interact with this portion of Cuba right here, which is highly mountainous. And right now the official track is right past this tip of Cuba right here, and then kind of across and into the Florida Straits near the Keys. And at the moment, if it does manage to slip just south of this part of Cuba and then not cross until later, it could have a chance to look a little bit healthier by the time it gets up into the Florida Keys area in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. That would allow Elsa to be a little bit stronger. But if it takes a track more right over the spine of Cuba like this, there might not even be much left of it by the time it gets over here. So there's a range of outcomes based on exactly what kind of track and what kind of wiggles uh, the storm takes. Even just a couple dozen miles can make a big difference on this kind of track parallel to Cuba. One of the other struggles the storm is facing in this kind of situation is it is now a very small compact vortex. If you look at the GFS uh, short-term forecast for this evening, you'll see that the, this tiny ball of vorticity here that we can see in the visible loop, it's a very small vortex, very limited extent of westerly flow on the south side. By the time you look down here on the satellite loop, there's no westerly wind here anymore. So it's a very small vortex. And this has the impact of a couple of a couple of things. One is that a very small vortex is very easily disrupted by land interaction. A larger storm can survive the passage of Cuba a little bit better. Something more robust can show up on the other side. But something this small is very fragile to being tossed to and fro by interaction with mountains and by the large scale flow around it. You can kind of see in the GFS how we have this, the strong inflow on the east side of the system, again, getting kind of redirected around this ridge to the north of Hispaniola. And there's not a whole lot of wrap around back into the storm. Typically a healthy flow structure around a storm would consist of the strong flow coming in and then wrapping and spir spiraling around toward the center like this. And that would be a healthy inflow setup for the system. Uh, but at the moment, this is more like a small cork drifting around in this larger envelope of curvature. And it's not going to fare very well interacting with these islands as a result, as it's kind of this small, this small tiny thing now embedded in the flow. 
And so on the GFS, this really falls apart. And by the time it gets across Cuba, there's only a broad weak signature left. This would still be a storm, probably you know a weak tropical storm on this particular forecast, uh, but only a shadow of the hurricane it was just 24 hours ago. Now, again, range of outcomes here based on exactly what kind of land interaction it has with Cuba, as it could interact only for a short time or for an entire day. Uh, but once it gets back into the Gulf of Mexico here in the Florida Straits, its final opportunity for re-strengthening will occur because if the track takes it up west of the Florida Peninsula for a while before coming inland, it will have this stretch of water time where we could see a little bit of a revival. And you'll see on the GFS here as it comes off Cuba, just a little bit of a pop here, a little bit of intensification does occur off the west coast of the Florida Peninsula. And this is facilitated by the upper level pattern, which again, currently consists of a a large ridge over the system, which is a favorable kind of setup. And as it gets out over the Gulf of Mexico, you'll see that as the storm gets here, there's a little bit more southwesterly flow here. So about 15 knots of shear on most model forecasts. That's not necessarily the most favorable setup, but it's not starkly prohibitive either. So this could allow, you know, this pattern would allow some reintensification potentially. It wouldn't, uh, prevent it. So we can't guarantee that the storm would stay weak here if it got some time over water. But it's worth noting that if the track nudges over the central part of Cuba, it could immediately go inland over the Florida Peninsula and this stretch of time over water is not that long. So that would provide less opportunity for re-strengthening. So once again, interaction with land, time over water could vary a lot even if the storm nudges by 20 miles, 30 miles. So a lot of things could change here in the forecast depending on exactly how the storm wobbles in its track. This is the current set of track forecasts from most of the models. Ignore this one because it's it's an outlier that's uh, likely inaccurate at this point. Uh, but we're focusing mostly on these solutions here where these models again show it getting very close to this part of Cuba and whether it interacts with those mountains will matter a whole lot. And then moving across the western or central part of Cuba and then into the Florida Straits and across potentially even the western Florida Keys, or maybe just west of the Keys and up into the Panhandle, again, whether it goes over the spine of Florida or stays offshore for a little while, could give it an extra 24 hours over water. So that's still something we can't guarantee either way. Right now, the official forecast is right down the middle here in black, moving into the Big Bend of Florida and then close to the coast of the southeast US, and it's worth noting here that even once we get past impacts to Florida, if the storm happens to be close to the coastline here, it could move up into the Carolinas and bring some impactful weather here, uh, given that it would be kind of over water at this point, it could still generate some stiff wind along with rain and surf. So we are going to be looking beyond Florida here and on into the area east of the Appalachians, which could get some significant impacts. This is the official forecast, uh, as I noted there. This is the, the official graphic showing this crossing Cuba on late Monday and then moving into the westernmost Florida Keys by Monday night and then on into the Big Bend of Florida sometime on late Tuesday, uh, bringing impacts to the entire peninsula of Florida on its way north. And right now, rain and potential flooding concerns are probably the biggest impact that we're worried about here. This would likely still be a tropical storm generating winds of between 40 and 60 miles per hour at this point in its life. Right now, the National Hurricane Center has it attaining 65 mile per hour winds before it moves back inland over Florida. Uh, but we're not really expecting the chances of this regaining hurricane intensity to be very high here. There's just so much in the way in terms of land interaction and the fact that the storm is quite fragile in its current state. Lots of things could disrupt it and likely will do so over the next couple of days. So only expecting a tropical storm here. There are watches up now for the Florida Keys and the western part of Cuba. And we have a hurricane watch in eastern Cuba just in case it manages to reintensify before getting to that region. But so far today, that's not looking very likely. Again, the track will be inland over the southeast US in the current forecast, but again, just a little bit shift closer to the coast and we could see even a little bit more wind than forecast up here. So that's going to be something to watch for the coastlines of Georgia. South Carolina and North Carolina. But no matter what, rain, of course, expected and elevated surf and rip currents along the coastline. This is the graphic of earliest possible arrival time of tropical storm force wind. This is basically the time by which you need to be prepared for potential impacts. And we're talking about Sunday night, early Monday morning when it starts moving into Florida. So that's the time by which dangerous weather could be arriving in Florida and then up into the northern part of Florida and Georgia by Tuesday evening and then North Carolina by Wednesday. 
and South Carolina. So that's kind of your timeline there. And then the color here is showing you your probability as forecast by NHC of receiving tropical storm force winds based on the legend down here in the bottom right. So you can see the corridor of highest probabilities run from Western Florida up into Georgia and South Carolina right now. And of course, the rainfall forecast uh, will be kind of the primary thing here. Most likely we'll get tropical storm force winds, uh, but rain and potential for flash flooding in areas where banding sets up and drops several inches in a short period of time could cause those flash flooding events to occur. And that's a very local thing. We talk about this a lot, how you get this overall rainfall forecast of four to six inches here, but localized spots that we can't predict could get even more than that depending on exactly where the thunderstorms form as the storm moves up. So be ready for the heavy rain and for the potentially strong winds that will come with this as it moves up. We'll keep a close eye on the system. Right now it is kind of in a decaying kind of mode, uh, but we will probably get significant weather here regardless over the next few days. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.